Welcome to our lecture online. Continuing our review of physics, especially in the ENM range of physics, we're now going to talk about capacitors and capacity or capacitance. Um, what is a capacitor? Well, capacitor is a device that's essentially two metal plates close up that are parallel to one another and that are placed very close together so that the distance between them is very small. So that's the distance between them and each of the plates has a certain cross-sectional area. Now typically if you want to turn that into a useful device what they do is they put some insulating material in between, a dielectric material, and then they roll it up into a little well, a little cylindrical device that they can then can encapsulate and then it's a lot easier to use that in electronics. But essentially it is, if you then unroll them, you have, end up with two metal, sometimes just foil, uh, metal plates that are very close together and also sometimes what we'll call a dielectric in between. We'll talk about dielectric a little bit more later. So, the symbol we use for capacitors is one of these two, depending upon the application. And here we're simply going to get a feel for what a capacitor is. And we have some definitions here. A capacitor is a device that has the capacity to hold charge. So that's the purpose of a capacitor. You can put charge onto the capacitor. You can hold it for a while and then give that charge back. You can store energy. You can do all kinds of things with capacitors. A lot of good, useful purposes for having a capacitor. But essentially for the basic principle is that it can hold charge. Now the capacitance is the amount of charge a capacitor can hold. Some capacitors have a lot of capacitance, some capacitors have a small amount of capacitance, and it depends upon how much voltage you apply to the capacitor. So the equation that tells you what the capacitance is, it is equal to the charge divided by the voltage. Now the charge is the amount of charge you can put onto the plates, they call that the charge collected on the plate, and divided by the voltage applied. So, the more voltage you have to apply in order to get charge on there, the smaller the capacitance of the capacitor. But if it, just a small amount of voltage puts a lot of charge in the capacitor, then the capacitor has a lot, of, a lot of room, a lot of capacitance to put charge on there. The unit that we use is called the ferret. We use the letter F for that, and the ferret is defined as a coulomb per volt. That makes sense because charge is in coulombs, and volt is in voltage, or volts is in voltage. Now, Notice that if you can put one coulomb of charge in a capacitor when you apply one volt, the, capacitance has the, capa the capacitor has the capacitance of one ferret. That's what that means. But typically, a coulomb is a lot of charge, and so normally on a, on a capacitor, you can, only, uh, you can only store a small fraction of a coulomb when you apply a reasonable amount of voltage on there. So usually, you don't see a lot of one ferret capacitors. Although with modern technology, they've, they've not been able to miniaturize the ability to store an enormous amount of charge on very small capacitors, so they've actually come up quite, a, quite a way along with it. The equation that we use to express what the capacitance is based on its physical characteristics, the physical char characteristics would be the size of the plates, the cross-sectional area, the distance between the plates, and then the epsilon sub naught is the permittivity of free space. So now we're going to talk about capacitors that only have air between the plates. Later on we'll see how that equation changes when you actually put a dielectric in between the plates. So what happens is you apply a voltage, so this is what we call a, a voltage supply or a power supply. It pushes charges onto this one plate on one side which causes the positive charges on the other plate to be pushed away because of the repulsive forces causing this plate then to become negatively charged. So for every positive charge you put on here, a positive charge will come off of here, go to the negative side of the power supply, and that one by one this becomes negatively charged as this becomes positively charged. Positively charged because you put extra positive charges there, negative charge because you remove the positive charges, and that's how you charge a capacitor. It's the voltage or the power supply or the electromotive force, whatever you want to call it, that pushes charges onto one plate, that pushes away the same charge on the other plate, and so now you have a disparity of charges that causes now a storage of charge. And that's how you store charge in capacitor. Uh, notice that the epsilon sub naught has this value right here, and also notice that the units work out because epsilon sub naught has units of coulomb squared per newton meter squared, 
area is meters squared, distance is meters, and when you simplify that, you end up with coulombs per volt, which of course again is the units for capacitance, which we then call farad. So that's basically understanding of what a capacitor is. Now let's go ahead and start showing you some examples of how to utilize that capacitor.